Welcome to Amazonia Communication Network, the most educational and anti-colonial revolutionary TV in sub-Saharan Africa. This primetime event will begin momentarily. We urge our viewers to stand by. Good morning, fellow viewers. Welcome to another episode of the No Connie Talk Show. I am Capo Daniel, your host, Sense Pass King, the Ambazonia Deputy Defense Chief of the Ambazonia Defense Forces. I want to welcome Una for all places around the world, for Europe, America, for Biafra land, for Ambazonia, for East Africa, South Africa, and for all the Central African regions that we will watch me through the Ambazonian Communication Network, the ACN. When I come good today, I come with a special episode focusing on Mazi Nam the Kanu, the, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. He is the main figure, the rallying point, the face of the Biafra nation, the leader who is selfless, who have successfully gathered the Biafra people and focused them under his leadership, providing them with vision, nationalism, spirit to push forward. The aspiration of millions of Biafran people who have been living like second-class citizens in Nigeria, wondering where they belong and are finding themselves in a very uncomfortable situation. And many of them are debating and considering the whole issue of the aspiration for independence of Biafra and what it will mean for Nigeria, the zoo as they call it. So please welcome to this uh, special edition that is focused primarily on Namdi Kanu adoption. We learned that he has been adopted. Uh, the, the incident has been going on. There have been discussion with the Ambazonian Defense Forces and the Ambazonian Governing Council, which we are allied. This is an ally. This is a friend of Ambazonia. This is our case. And we are standing with, them, with the Biafran people. The Office of the Governing Council's uh, Executive President, Dr. Cho Ayaba, have released a strong statement to confirm that uh, indeed Namdi Kanu have been adopted and without giving specific of where he was adopted or exactly what happened and we are waiting for the, the our allies on the other side of the border in Biafra the iPod to come up with an official position and an official statement then the governing council is going to release a comprehensive statement regarding this adoption but as an activist I'm coming to you today as a deputy defense chief I'm coming to you today to also talk about it uh, in the backdrop of the news as a press and also to give you some some updates 
about the issue that surround this surrounding this uh, particular issue without putting forth any policy position of the Ambazonian governing council that represent the Ambazonian people in this alliance with uh, with the Biafra. If you are listening to me for the first time, please know that uh, my language is Pidgin English. I speak Pidgin-based English. So those who have been assimilated and they are living by the British standard, uh, please bear that in mind. So Namdi Kanu, what, uh, what the people of Biafra, they need to know that this adoption is no different from the adoption of, of Sesiko Ayuk Tabi, one of the Ambazonian, uh, the, the leaders of one movement and one major faction of the Ambazonian cause who was, who was kidnapped in, in Nigeria and, and put in cargo plane and ferried back to La Republic to Cameroon where he languished in, in jail. He was held in communicado. This is no different. And the Biafran people should make no mistake about their approach towards this adoption. According to a letter that was sent to us from the coalition of Igbo lawyers in the United Kingdom, it states that he was adopted in Kenya, and uh, we will not dwell on that because it is not very important. But the Biafran people have to know, even the kidnapping of Bia of uh, of Namdekano is a big issue. It's a big international issue. His status, the country that had provided him protection, as somebody fleeing away from from persecution, torture, and murder from the Nigerian government, it's the country has obligation to protect him under international law. And if he was indeed ad ad adopted in Kenya, which I don't want to confirm, I'm just speaking from the basis of this document by the by the lawyers in the Igbo lawyers in, in UK, then the Igbo people, the Biafra people, will have to hold the Kenyan people, the Kenyan government, not the Kenyan people, excuse me, responsible for this particular act and make sure that they should be held to account. According to the lawyers, they want to sue the, the Kenyan government in international court but these issues will not be, be be handled in court as you know very well we live in a jungle back in africa africa is fast becoming a black hole of international law and namdi kanu knows that dr cho ayaba know that these are the emerging leaders of africa they know exactly that the international community the european states they do not view africa as a continent which whose people have the protection of the international law we have seen when the, 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 a journalist was, was killed and arrested in the Turkish embassy, in the, in the, in the embassy, Saudi Arabia embassy in Turkey. The international system was reacting, was reacting very actively to put pressure to make sure that that situation is arrested. We, we have seen that a, a, a journalist who was flying over a territory in Europe was picked up. The international community immediately gathered, but we have seen a, a silence of the international community regarding the, the adoption of Mazi Namdi Kanu, it is unacceptable. It, is, it should be a wake-up call to the reality of our situation in Biafra, in our situation in Ambazonia, that we live in a war where international protection do not equally apply to black people because we black people do not matter in the eyes of these people. For us to matter, we must matter to ourselves. We must be the primary protectors of ourselves. Ambazonian people and the Biafran people must protect themselves. It is our ultimate job to protect ourselves. We must not relent. We must not be timid. We must not be intimidated. We must not be terrorized to give in into the terrorist regimes in Yaoundé and now in Abuja that seeks to undermine and wage a subjugation war. We are not willing to discuss and like gentlemen to come to understanding in the spirit of international law but they are willing to go and break all international laws to kidnap our people. We must be able to do the same. That is a law. That is a law of the jungle. If it comes to that, we have to defend ourselves. We have to be radicalized. We have to do what it takes to send a message to them that they, these things will not be done with impunity. We are willing to defend our people. We are willing to sacrifice our people, sacrifice our life to make sure our people will live in dignity. Who govern themselves because they deserve to govern themselves they deserve to determine the political outlook of our 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 territories the biafra people they do have that case they do have that right we support them for their right of self-determination because it is their right that is due under international law before i make that case for for, for the biafran people 
which is something that they need to know and they need to listen to this very, very carefully. I want to turn to talk about who is Namdi Kanu and we have seen the initial reaction in the streets of, uh, of Biafra. We have seen the youth coming out to, to protest and to, to take down the Nigerian flags. Let me bring up uh, video images from Biafra land to see the initial reaction of the youth, which is something and I applaud. So these are the reaction we are seeing coming in from Port Harcourt in Biafra. The youth are rising up. This is the right thing to do. They cannot arrest somebody who have stood up for you and you sit down and you are trying to negotiate. They cannot come into your house and pull out your brothers and you sit down and you are talking about negotiation. You are talking about what is going on. You are, you are, no, you don't do that. You don't do that. The mistake that we made as Ambazonian should not be repeated by the Biafran. I remember when Seseko Ayoktabi, one of the leader of the IG group of the Ambazonian struggle was picked up. We had a series of meetings and the, the, be, be, before that happened, the Cameroon government had managed to infiltrate the Ambazonian revolution and put specific people in strategic position within his organization. And when things like that happened, those voices suppressed any rational reaction that could have served, could have saved the issue, the, the, the question of the day. At that point, I, I came out and I told them in a, in a defense meeting, in a defense meeting, that it was not possible for Nigeria to, to pick up Seseko Ayoktabi and ship him to La Republic to Cameroon the same day. Usually, when things like this happen, the international community, the oppressor and the people involved in this crime, they will be observing the initial reaction of the, 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 the victims. They will be watching and seeing how the Biafran people are going to react. And if the reaction is, we are going to go to court and sue them in a law court, who cares about law court and how long it takes? The states of Nigeria have enough money to give you lawyers to spend 24 hours with you there fighting in a the court. They want to see how you are going to react. It's going to determine how flexible they are and what they are going to do to proceed with this with this particular issue. The, Ambas the, the Biafran youth should not miss the opportunity that we, the Ambazonian people, we missed when Seseko was picked up. You, could not, you cannot allow a bunch of people who might be in your organization or within the Biafran movement as a whole that have been put there to suppress your reaction. You have to do the right thing. And the, the Biafran people have to know that this is not a defeat. This is not a blow for, 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 for the Biafran movement. As a matter of fact, Namdi Kanu have been a, a pacifier. He has been somebody who has been temp tempering down the, the heat of the Eastern Security Network. In, in, in discussion that we, 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 we picked up, in our in our inter interaction with this with the organization of the iPod and the Eastern Security Network, Nam Dikano have been the voice of peace. He has been the voice of restraint. I have been shouting in this my in this my show, telling the Biafran people, you have to rise up, you have to pick up arms. It's time for you to declare your state. It's time for you to kick out Nigeria from Biafra. You cannot allow agents of Nigeria, agents of colonialism, in your territory. These are the people going around identifying the people who are important. These are the people doing strategic monitoring of your, your children, your women, what you eat, what you drink. These are the people who are going to strangle you when the time comes. With the death of, 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 of Akonso, remember, they went to his house, they burned down his house, and these people are walking around your street. You cannot allow this to happen. If independent is the way, the Biafran people who are very religious, Namdi Kano, who is very kind. I remember when he called the Eastern Security Network and told them to go back to the bush, to fall back and declare unilateral ceasefire within a period to just keep things cool because he's a man of thought. Now, the Nigerian government is going to face a new breed of leaders that are going to emerge, not from IPOR, but from the Eastern Security Network, which has been the military wing. Leaders from that military wing are going to emerge they are going to be hard to be identified. They will not want to put their face forward like Nam Dekano had put his face forward. They are going to have a hard time to have somebody to moderate. The international community also is going to have a hard time to find somebody to dialogue on the Biafran side because it's going to be now war. 
war, 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 uncontrollable anger. It's going to build up, pick up steam. Don't don't mind the, the peace you see for a couple of days. But definitely the Biafran people must respond. They must defend their honor. They must defend their dignity. They must kick Nigerian out of Biafra. We will be waiting for their official statement. We will be monitoring the situation. We will also wait for the official statement of the president of the governing council, Dr. Cho Ayaba. I want you people to remember who Nam Dikanu is. They have, I've seen uh, if, uh, some caricature images that they want to portray of Nam Dikanu on the media. But watch this video and let the Biafran people be, be resilient to know that Nam Dikanu has anticipated a day that he could be killed. This is a fearless leader who, who had stood the ground in Nigeria, in Biafra land, fearlessly. Remember that. So these are all images of African of the spirit of Biafra challenging the Nigerian military, the stars and the police spirit fearlessly without being afraid to be arrested, without being afraid to be killed. He's ready for this. You should know that he is ready for this and the Biafran people should back him up as he lead the charge of Biafra to dig out Nigeria from Biafra. Remember, it is Nigeria who is in Biafra. Biafra who is in Nigeria. Make no mistakes. This is Nam Dikanu when he was on the ground. Somehow you have Fulani cattle going around there. It is very symbolic. So this is Nam Dikanu on the ground. A fearless leader confronting the SARS confronting the Nigerian military, the Nigerian authority, who seeks to dominate him, to seize his right. This is not about him, but it's about you, the Biafran people. He has stood up for you. He has shown you courage that you should not be afraid. You should not be afraid of the SARS. You should not be afraid of the Nigeria military that are there to subjugate you. And for the Biafran people, who are very religious people, who are very calm-natured people, who think that they can debate themselves to freedom with Nigeria. You cannot debate your way to freedom. Freedom is not given on a, on a, on a plate of, of gold. Freedom is taken. They are very religious people. I admire their religion. And, and, and for, for many times, I just look at that religion being put forward, I think that the nationalism should be ahead of that religion. This is about your life. This is about millions of unborn Nigerians that are going to be in slavery in Nigeria for the rest of their life. Be treated the way they are being treated now. Even worse. The worst days are coming. The Biafran people have to know that their independence is, is settled. They have made up their mind. It is something that is backed by 90% of the Biafran and they should act upon it. Nigeria is never going to give you referendum. It is never going to happen. If referendum come, it is independence for Biafra. Nigeria is in Biafra. Practical solution is get Nigeria out of Biafra. Start to, sub, to, to build your institution of a free nation. Exert yourself. A lot of people will, will question the rationale behind the, the, the Biafran independence movement, if it is rational, if they have a case, and they, they look at Southern Cameroon and say Southern Cameroon is, was recognized as a state by the United Nations. We govern ourselves. We went into a referendum. We made, it, we made a, 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 a bad choice to follow the British who forced us into a plebiscite to choose to join Nigeria or to join La Republic to Cameroon. It was against the will and aspiration of our people that had been expressed in a written document in the conference of Manfei. And I want to make this case for the Biafran people so that they should know and they should be convicted in their heart that this is not just, they are not just, their feeling of wanting to be free from Nigeria, to want to exercise their independence, their, their feelings that they are a separate people from Nigeria is not abstract, it's not baseless. These feelings of nationalism, Biafran nationalism, they are not crazy. It is based on human law that have been recognized 
in, by the United Nation, the Charter of the United Nation that was based on the Atlantic Charter that was signed between the British government, the, the American government, to permit the American government to intervene in the first war, in the Second World War. It was also agreed by the by the by the, the Soviet Union, the Atlantic Charter. And the British government had an obligation to obey and respect the people's right that is enshrined in the Atlantic Charter. They signed it. Remember that Nigeria is not one state. There are different people that constitute the state. What they created in 19, I think it's 1906 or something like that, when the amalgamation was established by the British government, it created two states. Two states and two people in Nigeria, the south and the north. The northern part, which is the Muslim, um, predominantly Muslim part, and the southern side of Nigeria, in the in the evolution of these states, that divided into the southeast and south, the southeast and southwest. You have the, the, the Biafran state, which is a state. It has a house of Congress. In Onugu, it has its parliament. It has built its system of making its own laws and had the, 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 the def, meets the definition of a people. The American government and the British government, they came and signed an international law, an internationally binding treaty between the British government and the American government called the, the American Anglo Agreement that was signed in 1941 that established the people's right. The people's right in that document states that no territory, there will be no territorial changes made against the witches of the people. That was where the right of self-determination was born. That document was signed on the Atlant in the Atlantic Ch Ch Charter, which was the basis of the creation of the United Nations, 1942. So the American government recently, Joe Biden visit in, in, the, in the United Kingdom, has signed the same document again. This is the, the visit of uh, Joe Biden visiting uh, Boris Yeltsin in Cornwall in England. They have signed what they call the New Atlantic Charter, reaffirming this international principle. There shall be no territorial changes against the will and the wishes of the people. The people that constitute Biafra land were seen as a people within the context of what we have as Nigeria, the eastern region of Nigeria. They have their parliament, they had their, their way of, of making consensus. The Nigerian government could not create Nigeria that will violate their will and their witch. It is the will and witch of these people to be free from Nigeria rule because this experiment called Nigeria have failed. They have that right. It is based on international law and on international treaty. If South Sudan could have independence, if Eritrea could have independence, if, if East Timor could have independence, why not the Biafran people? It is their right. It is based on international law and international principle that the people of Biafra have the right of self-determination. They had declared their independence previously. They went into a conventional war. This time around, they are more smart. And they can beat Nigeria using guerrilla tactics. They don't need to fight a conventional war with Nigeria. They need to just kick Nigeria out of their state to leave them alone and decide on their own governance. Remember that this principle of international law guarantees self-governance. The Biafran people will decide how they want to be governed. They have separated them in this evolution of amalgamation for the purpose of suppressing their right and keep them under the control of a central government which is a puppet of the western society that seeks to exploit their oil and handed it to the to the to to the to the Mbororo of the how they call these people the fulani people there they, they hand it to them and you find the fulani having all these excesses like many other countries that have gone through genocide like rwanda when a group of people have been given some superiority by the western people to hold territory for their benefit and for their interest usually when people are given such unlawful right and power over our other people they will they will have excesses they will think they are gods that's why the fulani people think they are untouchable because they are backed by strong power in the west but i want to assure you that the history of vietnam 
the victory of Vietnam have proven that nobody can beat you in your home if you develop the right tactics, if you are willing. Now the Biafra people have a leader that have rallied them. They have a focal point, Nam Dikano. It's time for them to go above that. That why Nam Dikano will be going through this, they will fight not just for, to liberate Biafra, but to liberate Nam Dikano because Nam Dikano will not be liberated by the courts. This is not a poli this is not a crime. He is not a criminal. All this case against him are politically motivated. They are designed to, to keep him captive so that the Nigerian, so-called Nigerian government can continue to exploit Biafra. So we, the Ambazonian people, through the Ambazonian Governing Council, under the leadership of Dr. Cho Ayaba, we are allied with the Biafran people and we stand with them during this period. We stand with, with Nam Dekano during this period. Let them, let them be resilient. Let them continue to fight for their freedom. We stand hand in hand with them. As allied, we will stand with them in battle. We will fight with them. We will protest with them. We will be with them all the way to Biafra become independent. We are neighbors. We are going to build good relationships, road cross-border cross -border trade. We are going to have the best relationship. Biafra and Ambazonia will be the base of an African that upholds international law an African that preserved the dignity of the entire African and that is going to forge the unity of the African states based on equality. You cannot unite without identifying what units you are uniting or respecting the various uni units. We, we stand for an Africa that respects the people's right and the people's aspiration. People's first, Africa for Africans. If Nigeria is for Nigerians, then who are the Nigerians? The Biafra people are part of that, that Nigeria. So what is the interest of those Biafran people? What is the interest of those Biafran people? The interest of those Biafran people is to meet their aspiration. Their aspiration is to govern themselves and decide their political outlook, which is for separation and independence. It will take nothing from anybody. Give them their freedom. You can take the oil and negotiate about taking the oil. The Biafran people are not interested and they are not motivated primarily because of oil. They are motivated by their dignity that has been violated in the creation of Nigeria without their consent, without protecting their interests as a people and as a state, and undermines their right to self-govern themselves as a unit. So we stand with Nam Dekanu, we stand with the iPod, we stand with the Eastern Security Network, and I, I just want to encourage the Biafran people that this is not the end. This is the beginning of a new era for them. And they must seize the opportunity. They must do the right thing. They must gather themselves across the globe because that is their strength. That is what scared the occupier and the colonizers. They are afraid of you. The Biafran people protest in China. Can you imagine in Guangzhou? So now they have touched you. They have stepped on the tail of the lion. Nigeria have stepped on the tail of the lion. And that lion have to roar. That lion have to show the war what it's got. Because if you fail to produce results now, then they have qualified, they have quantified you. They have measured you and they have weighed you and they will treat you accordingly. God bless you. Let's stay tuned to Ambazonian Communication Network, which is shown all across the globe and on our Facebook page, and make sure you subscribe on my YouTube channel for continue to continue to receive messages because Facebook, our Facebook page is being targeted for suppression. So we will focus more on YouTube and on our national national television. And I want the Biafran people to, to not believe that the international community will just jump and help them. You have to fight and liberate yourself. Remember that on Biafra Memorial Day, on your Independence Day, you had a ghost town and the whole Biafran territory was shut down to observe that Memorial Day. And no international press covered it because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution shall not be televised. Revolution are spoken by, are being publicized by real revolutionary like us. You have to abandon all those big PhD holders to, to come in there with all their political calculation and look for leaders who are like Nam Dikanu. His qualification is his love for Biafra, his selflessness, 
his uncorruptibility. Those are the leadership qualities you should seek. They should be put above PhD. PhD is an addition. Without all these qualities, you cannot have a real leader. Without all this quality, you cannot have a good leader. You look first, not the not the, the, the educational qualification in educational system that are meant to, to brainwash and assimilate people, but you have to look at their track record. Look at their, their willingness to die for you. Their willingness to sacrifice themselves to you. And remember what Nam Dikanu had said. Remember what he had said. Even about his death or his arrest. Nothing, nothing. I need them. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. I need them to understand this. We've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return. That is nothing anybody can do. If I'm alive, if I'm dead, if I'm wherever I may be, Biafra will come. If I'm dead, it's even better because it will come far more quicker. So this is the image I want you to remember and to hold tight about Nam Dikanu. Do not follow or be trapped or be deceived or be lured by the Nigerian Mafia with those steel images or any image that you see for real of him while he is in captivity. He is a lion man. He will never be broken. He will continue to stand. And any image you see for, for, for about him out there by the Nigerian government, do not remember. Always remember that his real image are the word he has been given to you every day on his podcast. Spending night and day campaigning for you, speaking for you, backing for you, preparing for your freedom, doing the hard work on the ground to make sure that Biafra can protect itself and defend itself and free itself. It's time for you to realize that Nigeria had already declared war against Biafra long ago. These are just the consequences you must kick Nigeria out of your territory. That is the right thing to do. And you are capable of doing it. Learn from the Ambazonians. We have made our territory ungovernable from Cameroon. We have made it unprofitable. The governing council and the Ambazonia Defense Forces have made sure that the, the occupation of Ambazonia will cost Cameroon more than they benefit from us so that they can pack their bags and go. We have liberated over 90, over 80 percent of our territory dynamically. We control our territory. There is no Niger Cameroon administrators in areas of that we control. We have kicked them out. They are remaining in their bunkers, in their military camps, where we will be, be bleeding them to leave our territory. The Biafran people have to know that history has proven that this is the only path for independence and the only path for freedom. Freedom comes at a cost. If you want freedom, you must be willing to pay the price and that price is now. Do not let people who are happy slaves, who are making money from the system, to hold you down. But let the youths, let those who are real revolutionary, take the lead. And you will have your freedom. It is inevitable, as Nam Dikano said, the point of no return have arrived for the Biafran people. God bless you. My fellow Ambazonians, the IPOB has confirmed the abduction of its leader Mazi Namdi Kanu. I'm following the developing situation and will make a comprehensive statement in the days ahead. The Biafran people must remain steadfast in their quest for self-preservation 
and the actualization of their nation. They must know that genocide before did not destroy the dream. Political affixation did not kill the hopes of millions of Biafrans to exist as a free people. The government in Abuja is building a legacy of kidnapping and rendition. It began with Ambazonians illegally kidnapped and unlawfully transferred to a third country, Cameroon. Today, it is the leader of the Biafrans. This is a dark pitch for Biafrans, Nigerians, and indeed the sub-Saharan region. The government in Abuja must come to the realization that abduction and rendition of leaders has never addressed the reasons that have compelled millions of people to act in defiance of tyranny and oppression. During this dark moment in the life of the Biafrans, I call on all of you to pray for Mazi Namdekanu and in his honor and millions of others like him, rededicate your efforts in the liberation of your homeland. Dr. Cho Lucas Ayliaba, leader of the Ambazonia Governing Council.
there is nothing more precious in life than freedom your freedom is in your hands there is nothing more precious in life than freedom your freedom is in your hands i have come here as the commander of this revolution to let you know that we will defeat Cameroon. Yes. We will not only defeat Cameroon. Yes. We will make it impossible for Cameroon again to ever invade our land.